Hello friends and welcome back for a very special video. Today you're in for a treat. Not only are we here on the beautiful wonder of the seas, Royal Caribbean's brand new biggest and boldest ship, we have three very special guests. I like to call them the three M's. Guys, today we're going to have a fun dialogue talking about our favorite aspects of the wonder of the seas, discussing our favorite hidden spots, where you got to go, what you got to see from some beautiful minds here. So I'm very, very excited. Mike, the cruise director, say hello to everyone at home. Hello, everybody at home. <laughs> we have Super Mario to my left here. As you guys know, we've interviewed him extensively on our channel. If you're curious about living life on the cruise ships, Mario, please say hello. The second M, hello. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Matt Hotberg from Royal Caribbean Blog. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Great, so today we're gonna have uh, Mike here ask us, because he has the best knowledge of the ship, just because he's been on it longer than we have. So he'll be asking us some questions discussing what you know we think of the ship and everything in that regard. So you know what, let's kick it off. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Nice to have you here inside the beautiful Giovanni's Wine Bar. And uh, first off, uh, of course, welcome to our home. As a, as a crew here on board, uh, we're just over 2,200 crew from 78 different countries around the world. So we're hoping the crew is making you feel welcome on our very first sailing. Uh, but first off, I, I'm going to start with Mario. Uh, Mario, you know, you and I have sailed together on and off since uh, probably 2008. Right. And uh, it's been uh, always great to see you come back on board the ship. What do you think? What do you think of the wonder? The wonder, wow. Well, um, you know, the biggest cruise ship in the world, right? The newest cruise ship in the world. And Royal just keeps pushing the envelope. You know, every time they bring a new ship, it's got new, new attractions, new innovations, new creations. And so my three favorite areas that I call them the wow areas that sets wonder apart from its sisters, right? Our number one, the sweet neighborhood, of course, deck 18, that's brand new to the wonder. The solarium, the expanded, beautiful, improved, amazing solarium, takes your breath away. And the third thing is, is the wind jammer. It's the supersized, wraparound, gigantic wind jammer, which is now on deck 15, instead of being on deck 16. So those are for me are the three big wows that I've seen so far. Great, it's, and every person has uh, eyes through a different lens. So different parts of the ship appeal to different people. I mean, I'm, I'm impartial to the beautiful Mustang that's on the Royal Promenade. And we were talking before this and that was your first car. That was my very first car, 67 Mustang. So when I saw it, I go, oh my God, my car's here. <laughs> <laughs> was it red? <laughs> It was red, yes. Oh, wow. Yes, candy apple red, as they call it, yeah. You know, and something we never thought about, which is actually quite funny, is, you know, I was walking across the promenade and people were getting in and out of the cars and I went, I wonder how long those seats are gonna last if we do that. So we're, I'm not sure if, if we're by voyage two or voyage three, those doors will still be open and available for seating, but if you can, you'll be one of the first people to grab a, grab a picture inside that. Matt, what about you? What do you, what do you love about the wonder and or what, or what kind of, maybe you didn't expect and kind of caught you off guard and you were pleasantly surprised about. That's a great question. The the pool deck especially, you know, I knew they were revamping the pool deck and, you know, Mike, you know Odyssey of the Seas, beautiful pool deck, but this is even better in my opinion. I love the changes over there, the flow of it. It's just from start to finish, starting the solarium, it's massive, it's enclosed, it's climate controlled, so it's always perfect temperatures in there. You've got the brand new view bar up there, which is absolutely stunning. We were up there for sail away out of uh, Port Everglades and man, it was just, Perfect, you know, it's just a great spot for that. And then you got, I love the seating, the stadium seating in the uh, pool deck. It's just, it's nice, it, everything's just been really thought out so well. So um, it, it's just a different dynamic to it. And, you know, to borrow Mario's phrase, it really was wowing. And that was a little bit of, a, I, you know, I knew it was coming, but I wasn't prepared for just how impressive the new pool deck was gonna be on Wonder of the Seas. Yeah, the, the, they got really smart with that where they moved the splash area. Uh, kind of over by everything by the slides, slides. And, and it just made more sense, you know, when we're talking about 
how do we make our ships bigger and better? And, and we get the feedback from our guests and, and we're able to make those improvements, but, but it's very innovative in what's going on. And the Solarium, we did a big party last night. We did the Hush Party up there and it, we had about 300 people, which was incredible in the Solarium. And uh, it was very exciting for us. Yeah. So much fun. One thing though, you're thinking about back to the car, um, some differences is we don't have the teddy bears inside the cars. Yeah. Usually those kind of like deter people from climbing in. So maybe you'll have to go on Amazon and order some yeah. big giant yeah. teddy yeah. bears to throw in the car so yeah. no one's climbing in. Yeah. Well, if Mario's planning on being here for seven weeks, we could just leave him in the driver's seat. <laughs> no, I put the teddy bear next to me. There you go. <laughs> All right, we were talking a little bit about shows, Mario, and I know you, you were kind of, of course, being the uh, cruise director, I oversee all the entertainment and the activities, as, as we all know. Um, have you had a chance to see any of the shows? Actually, why don't we start with uh, Matt? Have you seen any of the shows yet? I have not seen the shows yet because um, we're staying on for another week and my family's coming on board, so I want to experience it with them. But I've heard nothing but wonderful things. Things. You know, whether it's 365, they were just blown away by the visuals of that. I tried for no spoilers, but I've got a few spoilers. But the, uh, the Aqua Theater show, the preview of that, it's amazing how every ship you go through the Oasis class or even the Quantum class, any new ship that comes out by Royal Caribbean, and you, each one, you think, that's it. They finally reached the apex of impressiveness in these shows, and then, nope, here's the new hotness, and it's really amazing. It's a credit to the performers and the backstage crew who really spend so much time you know, working on this, practicing it, despite all the challenges, and it comes out looking just phenomenal, and I just, it, every time, I'm just blown away by it, so I'm very excited to check out the shows. Yeah, you're gonna, I know you're gonna enjoy them. Uh... Well, you know, I, I saw the 365, I was blown away by the, uh, the visuals too, and voices last night. Mm -hmm. I thought it was so unique because there were no custom changes, it was simple, simplicity. Yeah. Right, that's, uh, that's what I loved about it. I was able to relax and not have to, you know, see what the hell's going on. <laughs> but I have to tell you, Mike, the thing that really, really took my breath away was the creation of effectors. Mm. The documentary you showed the other day on how they created, they came up with effectors. And what really blew me away was the fact that it was done during the shutdown. During the whole shutdown, mm -hmm. well, everybody else, Las Vegas, you know, uh, Broadway, all the other ship, they were all shut down. And here's Royal, mm -hmm. you know, spending millions and millions of dollars in paying all these, you know, uh, performers and production people and technologists and everybody else, spending millions of dollars with no revenue. Right. That had to have a lot of vision, a lot of courage, a lot of guts to be doing that project because you, you basically didn't have the money to, to really pay for it. You had to borrow the money, right? Yeah. 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 And, and you had to believe in it because you were going to spend all this money, make all this investment for something that, you know, was in the future. Yeah. So I, my hat's off to Royal Caribbean management and Nick Weir and, and all you people that, that uh, are in the entertainment area for having had the guts to do that. Yeah, Nick's, Nick's so forward thinking yeah. with everything. I mean, right now, and yeah. what you'll experience uh, next week, and you did experience is, you know, the supply chain issues, which has had, you know, a little bit of an effect, especially with our production shows. You know, we had 5% of our set piece for the entire ice show. But if I didn't tell you that at the end of the show, people probably wouldn't have known because our international ice cast is just so, I mean, the talent just, its that's what these shows are all about is the talent. Voices is just about talent. You know, um, 365 is talent. Every aqua is talent, so. Yeah. I, think um, it's a, I think it's a credit, Mike, to the, again, to the how talented they are. I think some people maybe assume that these people, you know, the crew that come on here perform are just, they're, they're not singing, it's all, uh, you know, lip syncing or whatnot, but they are really good, talented folks in, in the ice skaters. They have international, uh, chops with with performances. It's it's something that I think a lot of people don't realize and in shows like this It allows them to really shine. Mm -hmm. you, you know what very one last quick thing You, you always look for those nuggets and here's yes. the nugget on board this ship and the aqua theater cast We have five former Olympians. Wow. They're right. so talented. It makes me like emotional and really proud of them I couldn't tell you what their names are for the ice cast. I don't know them But I'm just so proud of them because I see one, how hard it is, backflips on ice. I am not athletically inclined for any of that. You know, we, we'll go play later when they open it up for us. But it is so incredible and how hard, and like those nuggets of knowledge that you provided of how fast the show came together, I think it's just, it makes
makes it that much more appreciative when you see it because it's just beautifully done and then to not know that it's missing anything. And then to Mario's point too, not only is the entertainment built during the pandemic, the whole ship was. Mm -hmm. So that's just as like the wow factor of, you know, what can be done yeah. when uh, things are back to normal? It'll just keep blowing our mind. Let's talk about that because that's a good point. The ship was originally purpose built for Asia, as we know. Uh, one of the new food and beverage venues, which actually we were talking about Odyssey, I had a, a chance to sample some of the food that was going to be on this new restaurant, which was the Mason Jar. Mm. Uh, have you had a chance to peruse or get up there, Matt? Yeah, I've been up there a number of times. In the name of research, I tried out brunch, <laughs> dinner, late night snacks, the bar <laughs> menu, and maybe one or twice. I was blown away by it because, you know, Southern food is not my forte. It's not like something we order at home all the time, so I wasn't sure, but I gave it a try, and uh, boy, I never knew how much I needed Southern food in my life, but I've got it now, and it, I was just, it's so impressive because everything on there is, is phenomenal, and it's just, it, it's again, it's incredible. This is, this is one in many restaurants now that Royal Caribbean has been putting out there, original productions, if you will, right? Portside barbecue, you've got the Mason Jar, Giovanni's Italian Kitchen, and Wine Bar, which we're broadcasting from. These are all original Royal Caribbean restaurants that every time, it's just home runs after home runs, and I love it, so it's great. Now I know why you haven't been to the shows, because you've been, <laughs> up, <laughs> been up in the Mason Jar. Tell me, and not to veer off on this, but I want to know, what, what did you do for brunch? Did you try the French toast, because I've heard that mm. is... I did hear that was so, but you know what? Chicken and waffles, okay. I just, uh, I had to, and that cinnamon roll thing, which is like the size of my head, is incredible. I, I just had to have that. Next week when your family's back on, make sure you get the French toast, <laughs> yes. because it blew my mind. Our table nearly ordered everything off the menu because everything looks and sounds delicious. But that, I was like, oh, we're not sharing. This is for me. <laughs> Speaking of cinnamon rolls, if he eats a few more times, we'll be rolling them off the gangway. <laughs> Mario. I haven't tried Mason Jar yet, but I hear Matt's uh, excitement about it. And you know, I say, Matt's forte is not Southern food, it's all food. <laughs> <laughs> it's a celebration of everything on the ship, but mostly food. <laughs> So, Mario, you seem to always have a finger on the pulse of our Crown and Anchor members. You know, on board this week, uh, we are at almost 1,300 Diamond, Diamond Plus, and Pinnacle, our most experienced Royal Caribbean cruisers. What's the feedback that they're bringing to Super Mario? Because I feel like sometimes they might give you more information than they might give me or the hotel director or the captain. I think uh, they were very concerned when they suspended a lot of the Pinnacle benefits. And a lot of them were skeptical that they would be brought back. I was one of them. And now that they brought them back, everybody's like, Phew. Sigh of relief. Yeah, sigh of relief. So it's good. The vibes are good now. Before, not so good. Yeah. yeah. And I think that also piggybacks on the fact that we're almost back to normal, if you will, on the cruise experience. We're on a sailing in which we don't have to wear masks. They're optional on board. That's one of the nice benefits of the new program Royal Caribbean has with CDC. And it's, it's amazing to be able to do it. I mean, it, you know, it was fine when we wore masks. I didn't mind it much on other ships, but when you get back to this, you know, they're bringing back the, the core experience of the cruise, I think it really stands out. And as, and as a guest, yeah. I certainly can appreciate it more. And it's, it's, it's nice to be able to move back in that sense of normalcy again. Yeah, one of the concerns I'll tell you, Mike, was, you know, with the double points, you're graduating a lot, a lot of pinnacles. Yes. Lots of pinnacles are coming into yeah. the fray. And, and diamond pluses and diamonds. Well, if you go back to the, you know, when the protocols were issued, everybody goes to the diamond lounge. Can't do it. It's not sustainable. You can't put all those people in the diamond lounge. They won't, they won't fit in there. So then you have the capacity constraints yep. at the beginning of the, sh of the restart, mm -hmm. and so many people can go in 50%, and then you have to turn the other people away. And that was a big, big turnoff. I mean, I saw personally a pinnacle couple coming into the Diamond Lounge and they told them, no, you can't come in. We're at 50% capacity. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's Diamond people there, what about us? The real, real, that happened on the Odyssey, by the way. Mm. And I, I got very upset when I saw that, with that pinnacle couple being turned away, I, that I contacted the powers to be, and they said, oh yeah, yeah, that's unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. The next week, clinical lounge. So at least they gave us a, a relief valve of which to put people in. Yeah. But it's going to be, I think it's still going to be an issue in the future with all the double points and 
We are growing at an exponential rate. I mean, with the, you're exactly right. It's still with double points, nobody's catching you. But um, <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> but it's good to know. It's good to know that you have the ear of the higher up. So I'm looking for a little more money in my pay. <laughs> if you, you know, I mean, <laughs> for you, Mike, anything. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's great. Now we went to some exciting ports of call, and of course, you know, we're getting a chance to go to Perfect Day at Coco Cay, and nothing is is more beautiful than walking back to the ship and seeing the wonder of the seas sitting there in, in all its glory. Is there anything, is there any one thing, or, you know, I know people have, like you were talking about Instagram, is there any Instagrammable moments that you recommend to our cruisers who are coming on that they're like, oh, we gotta get pictures here, we gotta get pictures there, because that's a great Instagram moment or a great little vlog live moment? Sure, yes. Uh, well, our first port of call, first port of call for the wonder of the seas was Labadee. So Labadee is a private destination for Royal Caribbean and it's absolutely beautiful. What is really fun is since the last time I had been there was pre-pandemic, everything had a fresh like paint job. Everything was looking really, really clean, really nice, beautiful. Now, speaking of Instagram, mural walls are like all the rage. So all of the different buildings have beautiful like floral paintings and fun fact, it was all painted by the local Haitians. So um, they kind of had some free will, if you will, to kind of like do what they want with it in the sense they weren't given a whole lot of direction. So I think, you know, even on like the bathrooms, they're just like so prettily decorated and I think that's amazing. Um, so like the mural walls are like very like Instagrammable for like backdrops. Um, also, if you're going to do the zip line, the Dragon's Breath zip line from Labadee, it's so high up, it's incredible, but a shot of the ship like no other, uh, you just zipping on down um, for visually, and then if you bring your GoPro or your phone up, and um, it's breathtaking. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I, I did it the last time I was in Labadee, and thankfully I wore my brown shorts. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was good. Mario? I think a good contrast picture would be the freedom next to the wonder. Oh. Mm. The, remember when the freedom came out? Yeah. The biggest cruise ship in the world, the biggest wow thing in the world. They kept it a secret. The flow rider wasn't unveiled to the, like, the last minute, right? Remember that? The Freedom Days? Yeah. And then when the ship came out of uh, the, the yard, it was all ice. Remember that? Yeah. And it had to be towed out. And, and the Freedom was a big, big splash, right? Yeah. But now, put it next to the, uh, to the Wonder. <laughs> we were on our shakedown voyage. We were next to the brilliance, and <laughs> yeah, Poor brilliance. But well, you know, brilliance. I still think Radiance class of ship is one of the most beautiful interiorly that that you'll see. That schooner bar is just uh, incredible. The amount of glass, especially when going to places like Alaska, it, yeah. it is great. But sitting next to the wonder, I mean, it's uh, you know, it's always nice to be on the biggest, right? And is looking there, down. <laughs> yeah. Is there is there something as far as uh, Instagrammable moments for you? Is there something where you like? Uh, for me, for me, for sure, it's like the cowboy hat. Need to get a picture in front of that big cowboy hat on the Royal Promenade or, or the car. Is there something yeah. that you've kind of, your keen eyes have... Well, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the area that all four of us are not allowed to go into, which is the teen club. <laughs> they have the best one over there. They They've really got that, they, they literally have an Instagram wall up there. And maybe on the first day, on embarkation day, when the club hasn't gotten started yet, you can sneak in there and grab a photo before they lock it down for the teens. But there's a great spot up there. I mean, it's literally built for uh, for Instagram. You know, Odyssey had it as well too. When I got a chance, I haven't been in the teen club here yet because I just yeah. have a little tot. Um, but the teen club on Odyssey as well. Like I had, I got in yeah. before it started, and it was just blew my mind. Like the you know the wing walls and things yeah. like that. Just like that, it's like really really beautiful. Yeah, the the social 100, the patio that yes. they have with the jacuzzi for the teens, and they can only get in, or you can only get in if you have, you know, their card. You right. know, they, they have to tap it in, it's an RFID. We're not cool enough. No, but they've got, they've got this uh, old English style phone booth, you know, the red one that you think, yeah. and those are, you're right, there are so many Instagrammable moments up there, it's, it's, kinda, it's kinda cool. Yeah. 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 I have a question for the three of you, if you don't mind. Sure. So this is my first, well, one of my first, not the first, but one of my first inaugural sailings. Mm -hmm. And so with the three of you, and especially, you know, your, the career and everything, um, I think you guys have a bit more tenure than I do with, um, you know, maiden voyages, inaugural sailings. So I would love to just know, like, how does this experience compare? We are getting spoiled, friends. We're getting gifts in our rooms and special treats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's another reason why you might want to look into these things. So just kind of curious on who has special thoughts because this is only one of a handful that I've been on compared to you guys. 
Well, I mean, I, I think you know this as well. You just mentioned how many uh, Crown and Anchor members we have and high-ranking Crown and Anchor members we have, and that's a testament that it's a big, giant party. I mean, it's a celebration. It's homecoming, it's graduation, and it's Thanksgiving all in one, right? <laughs> and you have an opportunity to celebrate the arrival of the ship, and you're also with a lot of other people who get it, who understand the significance of this. Because it's a new ship, we're excited, and you get to see friends on board, right? Because, you know, I've seen Mario on other ships, and there's been a lot of that with the restart and now with the new ship on here. It's an opportunity to celebrate, and I think when you go on an inaugural, you're there because you want to say, I was there. It's like a rock concert. I was there at Skinner in 78, and I was on Wonder of the Season 22. Exactly. It's the, it's the creation of a new life. The inaugural sailing, here's a new life being born. We're going to take her out, and we get to go on it, and, and we're the, the really select people that go on it. And, uh, and we get treated extremely well with the, you know, the amenities and the gifts and everything. And my first inaugural was on Freedom, actually. Okay. <clears throat> and, and your cruise director was Ken. Of course it was. Rush. <laughs> the slightly thinner version of Ken Rush. <laughs> well, listen, COVID times have been a little difficult on us all, so. And I remember, I will never forget that inaugural. It was a, uh, uh, we stopped at Labadi and he just threw the thing out the window. He had a, a band, like a Beach Boys type band. It oh, was okay. called Surf Boys or something like that. But they, they looked like the Beach Boys. And he set up the stage in Coco Cay with a big stage and the speakers and everything. They had a big rock concert in Coco Cay and then lobsters on the grill. You would have loved that, Matt. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> always the food. Always the food. <laughs> and an open bar, all the beers you wanted, the Coco Locos and everything. It was just an amazing day at Coco Cay. It was the old Coco Cay. We had to tender in, you know. Yeah. So uh, it, it just made it extra special, you know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I've done five. This is takeout number five for me. Um, second with Royal, um, way back in the early 2000s. I was another cruise line, um, and they're always so special. Like you remember, honest to goodness, the crew members who you open this with. You work so so hard so many hours a day to get the ship ready for our guests that you develop this lifetime bond. And I remember the people that I've, ta I've taken out each ship with and still keep in contact with them to this day. So um, for us as well, it's, it's super special because, you know, we also get to pick our teams, right? As cruise director, I get to pick, you know, different people and then different managers and then they get to pick their people. So it's everybody's on the same team and it's so easy to work with and it's just a rewarding experience. And then when we get to see our guests come on board, um, it's, it's next level, especially, I will say, especially this one, because I find that there's way more of a bigger demographic of our top, top tier, our Pinnacle and our Diamond Plus, right. that even I haven't seen maybe in 10 years, and they're coming up, oh, we sailed with you back on Oasis in 2011, and, you know, on Liberty in 2009, and it's like, oh my gosh, yes, and, and they tell stories that, and I have the worst memory in the world, but they tell stories, and it's like, I can't believe that that was that. Yes, I remember it now, and and so you know, it's all about making memories. You yeah, know? it's like a high school reunion. You know, yeah. 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 it's been so much fun this week. <laughs> it really has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's well, going by fast though, too. Well, yeah. Well, we have a few more days because yeah. well, I think we're on day we're day six now, and uh, we're now we've now entered the Bahamas, and uh, perfect day. Yeah. What do you? I, you've been before. Um, you were there, I'm sure, before as well. Yes. Do you think it's more impressive that if you went there for the first time or if you had been to the previous Coco Cay before they made the big investment and then went back and saw it? What, what's, what's more impressive and what do you love most about Coco Cay? You know, I think the, the transition, certainly if you've never been before, you're still going to be impressed. It's amazing. But I think for folks like us who, who went to the old Coco Cay, it, it's incredible to think about the scale of what it was versus what it is now and how they were able to transform that. I remember seeing the old version and thinking, I don't know how they're going to make this all work. It's so small. This island is, you know, and then you obviously saw the expansion. And it's kind of interesting now to point out, you know, this is where we used to do the tender ride in. This is where the mermaid statue was. But it's incredible that they've been able to take that original concept and expand upon it and how much of a home run it's been in its relatively short amount of time it's been out there. And even the new expansion plans for Hideaway Beach, it's, it's exciting that you know we have this. And I always think, Mike, variety is the spice of life. I like having choice. Sometimes you feel like the pool, sometimes you feel like the ocean, sometimes you feel like the pool and the ocean, sometimes you feel like the beach club. You have those options there. And I appreciate that because you have, you know, depending on where things are, where what your kids feel like, yeah. you, can, you can roll with the punches a little bit easier. It's all about the beach club because it's got 
drank of food. Got food. Best steak <laughs> on the ship. <laughs> I think it's something you definitely need to prioritize, though, too, in experiencing because it is with everything with Royal Caribbean, from the ships to the private destinations, it's all about the evolution. And to Matt said, it's like unrecognizable. What I think is really interesting is that I had gone to uh, Coco Key when it was just Coco Key and not Perfect Day, and fun fact, I forgot I went. So for me, it wasn't as memorable. It was very comparable to other cruise lines, private destinations, and it didn't stick out in my memory until I went back into my cruise log and my husband was like, no, we've been. And we got into a little like, wait, what? No, back and forth. And he's like, yes, we went. And now you won't forget that you went down the longest water slide at sea or you swam in the largest freshwater pool in the Bahamas. Those are the type of things that it will be in your memory, making those memories. It's you won't forget about it mm. compared to some other experiences, and I ex experienced that firsthand. It's wonderful. Ah, uh, oh, see what you did there. <laughs> you know, I always think of uh, things from a business standpoint, you know, and like I said with the production shows, you know, how the money it took to put that on. Well, with Coco K, I look at Coco K, at Perfect Day, as a tremendous competitive advantage for Royal Caribbean. Oh, yeah. Sure. Huge competitive sure. advantage, mm. and nobody else can match that private destination. Yeah. Yeah. So, boy, you're getting a lot of bang for that for that investment. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It certainly is fun. But Wonder has been, you know, <clears throat> such a, a journey to get here. And um, you know, we we look ahead. We have Icon on the horizon. But this one, I'll tell you, uh, when we're talking about Coco, and you guys pronounce it correctly with Coco Key. I, I noticed that both because it's <laughs> Bohemians pronounce it Coco Key. Michael Bailey, I believe, in, in pronounces it Mike, uh, Coco Key. Uh, we all Coco Key. But um, the song says Coco Key. It does say Coco Key. So I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say, but Wonder of the Seas in her maiden season before heading back to Europe will be calling on perfect day uh, each and every voyage. So there's not a voyage that we miss it. So everybody who comes on Wonder will be able to experience that. Perfect day is truly incredible. Don't miss it. So much to see and enjoy. So thank you guys so much for joining. Before we close up, I want to get a quick rapid fire of what you cannot miss from Wonder of the Seas on this incredible vessel. Mike, we'll start with you really quick. Sure. Uh, Aqua Theater. Can't, can't miss it. View Bar is definitely a must-see, especially for Sail Away. Mario. My office on the pool deck. <laughs> Be sure to get us off, yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and say Mason Jar as it was way above my expectations. So I thank you guys so much for joining us. My three M's here, my friends, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Be sure to leave a comment down below. Follow all of their socials as well. We'll have that on the screen and then in the description box for you to follow them along as well. And until next time, ciao, ciao for, for now. now. <laughs>